Right, I'm going to talk about generators in this tutorial. So, what? Oops, I did that all backwards. What is a generator? Right. Well, a generator is an iterable object that can be iterated over but it is not a it is not an object that contains all the iterable instances of whatever it iterates at once that sounds really confusing probably because you're thinking well, how can it not be an object that contains all the iterable instances of whatever it iterates? How can it not be that at once? So, it, an iterate, a generator doesn't contain, uh, per se, every single iterable instance uh, within it, like an array would. It, rather, every time you want, uh, every time you iterate over a generator, it will procedurally generate each iterable instance when you iterate over that instance but as soon as you've iterated over that instance and gone on to the next instance the instance before it is gone and you can keep iterating over a generator until you've iterated every item at which point you can no longer use the generator if you've used the generator as a stored object that is right so let's show you a little bit of what i mean because these generators are very easy to make but very hard to understand and hard to explain and the benefit isn't always uh, fully understood let's say we want to make i don't know some kind of object we'll call it for iterable um return iterable return right we'll say for i in range nine return i before i even run this can you see a problem with this with this well i can i put four instead of define sorry that was supposed to be a uh, function so other than that can you see any problems with this function because i can um what i can see is what we want to do is return every single i uh, in range 9 which is actually 0 1 all the way up to 8 yeah and we want to return 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 but as soon as you use the uh, return keyword you return whatever you know this is and then you get you exit the function so this is just going to return the first item in range 9 which is going to be 0 let's have a look if that's what happens So, iterable return. Oops. It would really help if I uh, ran the definition statement first. And then we'll iterate over that. And we don't iterate. We, we return this at the first i, which is 0. And it just sends out the return value of 0. Okay, so you could probably, you know, change this, make a list, and then return the list, whatever. I know that. But the whole point is showing that return... Um, doesn't allow you to return a whole iterable without making the whole iterable and then returning that iterable, right? So you could make a list here, for example, and then return the list of range 9, right? But you can't return the whole thing as an iterable. It'll make sense when I show you how to make a generate and what it is. So let's say we want to make a generator. And to make a generator, we actually have to put it inside of a function and we have to use the keyword yield um, you cannot use the keyword yield outside of functions okay so we're going to call it yielder right because it's going to yield a generator okay for i in range 9 that's what it's going to that's what it's going to actually yield right and we're just going to yield i okay Let's uh, 
has actually run this statement this time. <laughs> What's going to happen here is if we run this, it's going to make a generator object uh, that allows you to generate this uh, or iterate over this and access this iterable. Okay, so we're going to say yield and let's see what happens. We just get a generator object yielder, unfortunately, which isn't, you know, zero to eight as we planned. But we can say for i in yielder, print i. Okay, and what we're actually going to get is 0, 1, 2, 3, and 8. So what happens here is each time we use a print statement, so we, we created a generator object, and a generator object is an iterable object that can be iterated over, but is not an object that contains all the in instances of whatever it iterates at once, right? Rather, it just contains the current instance. So when we use for i and yielder, what happens is, the yielder generates the first i, which would be zero, and then the generator object is now on its second iteration. That zero no longer exists, only one exists. And then we print again, and one exists, one is printed, one no longer exists, and there it does zero. It just produces every item one by one as we need it. Rather than storing all nine of these items into an array, it just generates them when we want, okay? And this saves memory. So let's let's assume, for example, I don't know, we, we, we made a return function that made a list of 4 million digits, 4, 4 million integers, right? And we returned that whole list. Well, and then we iterated over the return. We have to keep that whole list that we've returned and iterate over every instance whilst using that list in memory uh, and whilst the function's running. Once the function stopped and we've got that whole list, that's fine. We've got our return value. But as as that function's running that's using that list, where we're using that whole, you know, four million integers memory. With a generator, every single integer is generated as we iterate into it. So we don't have to hold four million integers. We're just holding one integer at a time, and we're going to iterate over the generator 4 million times. That's it. So you can save a lot of random access memory that way. Now, let's show you know a good example of where we might might you might use this outside of this simple example of how to use yield. So we'll say a list, right? Or we'll say a list, and it's equal to x for x in range 9, just the same. We'll say a list 1 and a list 2, right? So I'll copy and paste that and make a list 2. Copy and paste this. Yada, yada, yada. A list 2. Simple enough. Let's just make sure we actually run those as statements this time. And let's make, you know, We'll make a we'll make a return, and we'll make a generator of these items, right? So the first one we'll say we'll define a we'll call it five list, and it'll just essentially you know make a list that's five times the value of the last list, right? And we'll say for i in range len a list we want to do something okay what do we want to do we want to say that a list i is equal to a list i times five right and then here outside of the for loop we're going to return a list simple enough okay now we're now going to define five list yield. And don't worry, I'll explain all this after I've made it. And we're going to use the exact same 
we're going to use the exact same sort of loop here range len a list oops i in range oops i didn't need i didn't need bull range there we are there for i in range range there we are all we're going to do is we're just going to say yield i times five so we've made a generator in the second one here let's just run these now and we're going to print we're going to say for i in our list one print i simple enough and we should get zero to eight easy peasy easy peasy let's say for i in five list a list no a list one print i and for i in five list yield a list two don't worry both lists are identical we're just going to print i so let's run the first one again we get zero one two three four five six seven eight blah 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 easy peasy here we get all of those numbers except you know times five but our list one has been permanently altered because of this because we've now changed it in there now let's use this yield and we should get the same results as we got from the regular uh, five list okay and we got the exact same results however they have been produced very differently and they can be used for the same purposes so let's go over how what the difference is here well one thing you might notice straight away is we've actually managed to cut one whole line of code out here so that's great that's efficient and if you actually look at list two or our list two you'll see that the numbers haven't actually changed whereas the numbers in the original list have but okay sure we could probably change this algorithm and make it so that we make another new list and we make the new list equal to the length of the old list and then we just change the number or append numbers to the new list then we don't change the old list right okay fine but this one here is still far more memory intensive so let's imagine that a list now contains 500 million numbers or it contains an amount of integers that would be equal to 65% of your random access memory, right? So you're already memorizing a list here, right? When you then try to return a new a list or use a new a list, you're still using 65% of RAM, right? You still have to use 65% of RAM when you're going through this here because you have to keep all of a list you have to return all of a list when you're doing this for statement and you have to print each item within a list you have to remember the whole of a list in order to do it right in this generator you're just printing one item from a list out at a time but you don't need to memorize the whole of a list so this has saved you all of that extra ram that you would be using with the non generator function that's really it that's all there is to it it's quite complicated it's a lot to get your head over but basically using yield instead of return when there's you know big data frames big data sets massive lists involved essentially just saves you a heck of a lot of memory there are some problems with yield there are some advantages to return over yield and one one thing that's kind of problematic over yield is because it returns everything once at once at a time and doesn't memorize the whole thing it's a little bit less efficient than a return statement so it might take a little longer but if the thing's big enough that it's going to take a few seconds you know returning the whole thing 
twice or using the whole thing twice or using all that extra RAM might be too much for your computer anyway. So you're probably best off using yield even though it's less efficient. On the other hand, returning, um, well, if you want to create a new list and you want to keep a new list, for example, it will take you longer to generate it with yield and will be harder to do, easier to do with return. That's about it really. So yeah, it's it's only really advantageous uh, when you're using things, large data sets that require a lot of RAM. Anyways, that's about it. And I hope you enjoyed.